In this video, we're going to finish off our derivation of an unbiased estimator for sigma squared. And this is what we got to at the end of the last video. The fact that the expectation of u prime times u given x is equal to the trace of mx times sigma squared. Okay, so how about this quantity, the trace of mx? Well, we know since we introduced the definition of um, mx that this is equivalent to the trace of the identity matrix minus px. And since the trace operator is just a linear operator, this is just equal to the trace of the identity matrix minus the trace of px. And the trace of the identity matrix is easy enough. It's just n because we've got n uh, ones on the diagonal. And then we're just left with minus the trace of p of x. Okay, so what about the trace of px? What do we know about px to begin with? Well, we know that px is what we call idempotent. And idempotent matrices actually have some particular properties. One of them is that the trace of an idempotent matrix is actually equivalent to its rank. So we know that the trace of px is equivalent to the rank of px. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, we can actually write down that the rank of px is equal to the rank of, well, just replacing px by its actual definition, which is just x times x prime x to the power minus 1 times x primed. And we know that essentially we're just taking x and multiplying it by some other stuff. So this actually has to a rank which is less than or equal to the rank of the matrix X. There's no way that we can take a, a matrix X and multiply it by something else to get something with higher rank, especially when we're multiplying it by itself. Okay, and we know that the rank of X is equivalent to the rank of PX times X. Why do we know that? Well, we know that PX times X is just equal to x because x already lies in its column space. So when I take the orthogonal projection of x, it just yields itself. And finally, we know that essentially this has to have a rank which is less than or equal to the rank of px because px here is a matrix which is n by n, whereas x is n by p. So assuming that it has a rank which is less than px is absolutely fine because we know that that's going to be the case here. And the only way that this sort of chain here can actually make any sense is if all of the inequalities, so this one here and this one here, are just equalities. Hence, we have that the rank of px is equal to the rank of x. And the rank of x, if it's a full column rank, is just given by the number of independent variables, which in this circumstance is p. Hence, we can replace this sort of expression up here, the trace of mx times sigma squared, by something else. So we can write that the trace of mx is equal to n minus p, and we can hence write a good estimator or an unbiased estimator for sigma squared. I'm going to write it as sigma hat squared. It's equal to u primed u all divided through by n minus p. So notice the difference here with the version which we suggested before, we've got not just n on the bottom, we've got n minus p. And if you correct it by using the, this factor of p, that means that it's unbiased and it's consistent as well.